Hello, my name is Cesar, and this is the video number six of the series of the naming series. Uh, we are developing a naming convention library in Python, so uh, you can configure your naming conventions uh, programmatically, and all your tools and scripts relying on names can. Well, there's a layer, so if you change your names, your script are still working, your tools still work. So in the last video, we uh, did a little bit of rule management. That means that we can add, uh, remove. Um, we also have uh, this concept of an active rule, so we, we can handle many rules now. Uh, I know that we can do it programmatically. Uh, in the past, it was hard code here. Uh, so we also did that on the test. So now each test adds its own rules and um, as far as yes and it's all working so that's great uh, today i would like to do a little bit of cleanup um, and uh, and make sure that we can solve and parse names uh, with different rules right so yes so let's get started Okay, so the first thing I want to do, uh, so I was looking at this, uh, the way we are adding a rule. So we pass a name, we pass a pattern, which imply that the user of this library knows that we are using this kind of format, uh, formatting or templating uh, format string, which I don't particularly like. And then the only way to set a rule active is by adding one, which is not super great. So instead of doing that, I would like to change this. So we can do like description side type. Uh, yes, so like that. And we probably want to do, yeah, like uh, set active rule test. Uh, or if there's no rules, maybe the new one, like the only rule would be active by default. But yeah, I want to hide the templating we're using from the user. So if we ever decide to change it, uh, we can do it, right? Otherwise, we are kind of lock into it, and that's not super great. So cool. Uh, we need to do this set active rule. So we'll add that to a test. So yes. Uh, so yes, yeah, so in order for that to work, uh, I would like to add two tests. So I can test this stuff. So this may be test number two. And here, let's change this a little bit. So the side will be first. And maybe let's not use all the tokens. So side and description, for example. And then I can set test one as the active. So maybe that will do it. So let's put that over here too. So this is test number one now. Let me center that. And this is, uh, what was it? Description side type, right? Uh, so I need to do the column or the thing. So this like that and this like that. Cool. So we don't need that pattern. Cool. Uh, yeah. Cool. So now I need to change all the add rule, right, to the new syntax. <laughs> okay. So that's great. That's great. Cool. So this is now description size and type uh, back 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 add the thing cool 
same thing description side type back 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 cool and same stuff <laughs> okay description side and type um, cool and uh, next would be that one same stuff so description size and type right and this is like this okay nice uh okay cool cool that's cool so let me run the test and of course everything fails <laughs> so let's add it uh, let's fix it so here instead of all that we need to take any number of fields arguments fields uh, so we need here to confirm that pattern so I can do it maybe like that pattern will be equal to equal to so maybe we can do it uh, like this that join field and then we can use that we need to grab that on on curly braces sorry So uh, I need to escape, define my field, and escape again. And maybe instead of this, I can say if there's not an active, no. Maybe if uh, active rule is known, I can set active rule to name cool so now that's saying that doesn't exist so let's implement that let's set active rule uh, name if uh, so we need to check that uh, the rule uh, exists. So if, if not uh, has rule name, we just return false. Otherwise we say rules. Uh, damn it. Okay, uh, active, right? it equals to name and here we probably can just uh, return this maybe maybe not okay we can change that later so if I run the test now one of these is failing Uh, because we are not setting the rule properly because of course we are testing the function and not the value so this works that's great uh, great uh, so cool uh, let me see if the, oh okay we have just two minutes so this, this is great but we are not testing if we can solve the actual name right so let me uh, Duplicate this over there, and here we're just going to say naming dot set active rule to uh, test two, and the name we're expecting back is side 
underscore foo so and here is m underscore foo so that's that and here we can do the same thing and we probably need to do this copy the entire thing again and we are waiting for m underscore foo and did the new thing and this the same cool and here let me center this so we copy the entire thing and we say set set active boo to test two and here we want foo uh, m underscore foo and m underscore foo so that should solve let's run the test and everything is passing so it looks like we can solve names with different rules which is awesome let's do the same with the parse so we have to test it's all good we just copy the entire thing oh, we are almost there <laughs> set active rule to test two right and now we need to pass a different name which is uh, m underscore foo and this should shouldn't give us any any type and actually we can add here a, a, a new test saying that uh, the len of parsed it's equal to two while here it's equal to three to make sure we're doing the right thing and if I save this and I run the test everything is passing so that's great um, so cool uh, this is working awesome so that will be for today I hope you like it and see you in the next video bye bye